Hello everyone and welcome back to Cloudfall Zoo and well I'm starting this episode looking at the stuff I built last episode because it's been a while since I've seen it and also because it's all gone. That's right, everything I built in the uh the last episode has all been replaced by this new well not everything, but almost everything has been replaced by this new wetlands area. Yeah, last episode I just built I built the cheap enclosures. So I wanted to get out of my system. Wanted to see if I could build it, but now we can build build more modern stuff. So yeah, we have this big old wetlands area to explore. And I I did, I did end up finishing this, or well, most of the exhibits actually were finished a while ago, so I could have made this episode a lot sooner. It's just the last few exhibits you'll see at the end, it took me a while to finish those, so I think those are kind of holding me back. I was also lazy to record, but but it's fine. We're recording now, so yeah. So first up, the South Wetlands area, we have the big old what I would say is the grand feature of the area, the Wetlands Avery. So just just to contextualize, because it has been a while, the the old hoof stockyard with the springbok, the yellant, and the ostriches over here, and then our Hog enclosures here, and then you can see there's the star backstage here, which also leads into the aviary itself. And it's a walkthrough aviary, of course. We won't have such a big aviary and just allow guests to view it from the outside. Now we have a double door. Actually, probably put should put some sponges in that just to clean people's feet, so they don't tread in any diseases for the birds. But yeah, this is the wetlands aviary. Let me let me press play. Game's a little framey now, I even took out all the guests, but I think, yeah, the animal, yeah, I have a lot of animals, but, yeah, so I'll just, it's, it's not so bad, but we'll unpause every now and again. So the only actual animals I have in here is the Sacred Ibis mod and the, uh, Grey Crowned Crane, you can see it over there. Everything else is all prop animals, either made by me, so like the stalks on the waterfall made by me, or... Like the Starling or Ibis was made by Jaguar X. Unfortunately, I keep on forgetting who made the animal mods, but uh, they, they'll be in the description. Check the description; you can see. It. Oh yeah, and this the spoon bowl. I can't remember who made the spoon bowl originally, but uh, I modified. It was a Eurasian spoon bowl, I think, and I modified it to look like an African spoon bowl. That'll be in the workshop collection as well. Well, the the original Eurasian spoon bowl. Yeah, let's uh, take a quick look around, we've got some signs, you know, giving people education about the, the wetlands, we've got one on, on marshes, this kind of a little bit more marsh-like area I guess, there's some typha over here, and it's more open, more grassy, so kind of resembles a marsh. walk along here, we've got some teals, eating from a pan, we've got some uh, starlings, again these were made by Jaguar, they're really, they're pretty good, but I think Jaguar is making uh, some new birds, some new starlings, so we'll replace those eventually, but for now, for now the starlings aren't released, so we use the old ones, and the old ones are still pretty good, if you ask me. Here we have a sign of all the animals in the aviary, well implied or not. So, like like the ibis and the the crane are at least animal mods. The other ones are props, but the moorhen and the daker you're gonna have to imagine because uh, I haven't I didn't have time to make a prop for moorhen and I don't think I placed the dakers in here for whatever reason. Here we come over a little bridge, goes over a little waterfall. We got a little starling. We got some. Bald ibis foraging in the water over here, as well as a spoon bowl. Yeah, just come from a. So we have like two kind of separate areas, like a more open grassy area, and then also like slightly more forested, uh, dense area. And since it's more dense, I decided to put up a sign educating people about the, the swamps. The swamps are just more forested wetlands, whereas the marshes are more grass dominated. There's a taker. I did I did put the taker down. Okay, I forgot about that. 
I think I put the wrong Dacre species on that sign. That sign says common Dacre. I think this is supposed to be blue Dacre. That is my bad. I will edit that. But anyway. We come to our next enclosure. Which is a big wide open little pool. A little waterfall at the back there, of course. This area has a lot of waterfalls. Because I've sightable the wetland area on a hill. And the only way to have the water flow organically between exhibits is with waterfalls and you know the terrain difference makes waterfalls very natural to do but so yeah waterfalls everywhere so this is a exhibit for so on the sign just now pelicans great white pelicans I believe these were made by Druk we've got the lesser flamingos we also have some domestic geese but I'm gonna move them to another enclosure next episode which is why I didn't make a sign for them also, they're a little oversized. That's that's my bad. So the flamingo, they look weird next to the flamingos. Anyway, and we also have some other birds that wandered in from outside. Like we have a little a white peacock that came in. That's a free roaming peacock. And usually, if you've ever been to a zoo in South Africa, you know in like the areas where you have ponds with water birds and stuff, it's a big attractant for sacred ibis. So, yeah, we got. I put some sacred ibis here. It is a mod you can check. Uh, check it out in the description. But uh, yeah, realistically, there'd actually be a lot more sacred ibis. Like I said, in these areas, you have a uh, a lot of ibis that attract these water sources. I'm not sure why. I think it might be the food that's laid out, and then also the water is because of the ibis forage in water. Go the fence there. Got some shelters at the back for the, the birds to sleep in if they want to, I guess. But yeah, I think in the future I'll probably move the flamingos to like a different enclosure or something. Maybe build something to, to replace the swift stock yard. Because you know, it's just looking a little old and janky now, so it might be time to replace that. But yeah, got a little sign on. Endorake pans, you know, rivers that don't lead to the ocean, they just fill up a little bowl in the middle of the land, which I guess is kind of happening here. So, yeah. Come over here, with big old Avery with our African fish eagles. So, I modified these from Drock's uh, bald eagles. Yeah, bald eagles. So they look like fish eagles, they're a little lighter in colour and the, the white goes all the way to the chest. They're of course a little waterfall feature in the exhibit. But then at the back there, did put a little shelf there so the eagles can build up a nest and they can start breeding. And I put some corrugated sheets just to block up the light and then also put a little bit of shade and shelter for the nest. On the side, just got a little sign on waterfalls. And over here, we have an exhibit for penguins. Well, this is a little bit of a weird enclosure for penguins, but it is kind of based on the one at World of Birds in Cape Town. Because there's like a bit more densely foliated and I'll, I'll throw pictures on screen because, you know, picture says a thousand words, explains it better than I can. And I really like that aesthetic, so I wanted to build a penguin enclosure like this, like that, so... Yeah, the penguins don't actually swim in this pool that much. There's one swimming now, but I hardly see them swim in here, which is very weird. I don't understand why, but it's still penguins. I see them waddling around. I'll just put some ibis in here, because you can, of course. And yeah, come at the back here, we've got some little uh, shelters for the penguins because uh, this is, these are little penguin nesting tubes, I guess. I don't know what to call them. But yeah, if you have a, I suppose, like a low budget setup, or if you just go to the wild, to the wild, if you go like on Boulder's Beach or Stony Point, 
they have these little nesting boxes set up for penguins, for wild penguins. And look just like this, it's these little plastic tubes that the penguins go in and they just nest their eggs in there. And so yeah, I'm gonna make that with in this enclosure. I think in the future I'll probably give the penguins a more fancier setup, but for now, they uh, I wanna get this exhibit done. Maybe in the future I'll put some other water birds or maybe even like a, a pygmy hippo or something in this enclosure. Yeah, I also like this little point. I imagine this would be like a talk point. The keepers will come with a little bucket of fish, stand here, and then feed the penguins and educate the guests. I couldn't actually get an education talk point to work in here, unfortunately, with the game. But ah, it's fine. It'll, it'll live on in our minds. Game getting laggy. Let's pause. Got a little sign on functional feeding groups. I, I need to add pictures to these signs, but the text is all there. It's just explaining how, uh, how in a river the different invertebrates, the categories they fall under, and then how people can use the proportions of these different groups to determine river health. So over here you might... I might have noticed there's a whole bunch of reeds here. So this is an artificial wetland the zoo has created to purify water. Kinda like the the one in Johannesburg Zoo. Although a little bit smaller scale and you can actually walk through this one. It's a little weird but I liked it. So yeah, I've got some signs, so one on eutrophication. Some on just some generic threats to wetlands. And then yeah, we can see the, the bird's eye view of the, the wetlands, so I don't have to hop out of the explore mode. So yeah, we are standing over here, you can see there's the water treatment pools, which we'll check out in person in a bit. But yeah, we have the, the reeds, so the water will probably be pumped out of the top there, flooded all the way down, and will be purified by all these plants, and there will also be a whole bunch of other stuff living in here, a little ecosystem. I know the one at Johannesburg Zoo, I think they even have fish in there, so yeah. It, it cleans out all the water, so the zoo can reuse its own water, save a little bit on costs, and it goes into the water treatment pools. We're going to the pool first, and then yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know a lot about water treatment, but it should work. It's, it's, it's based on the systems at Johannesburg Zoo. And you're just a sign on the value of wetlands. Yeah, this pops that out us out by the exit of the Crocodilian Pavilion and near our Vorsaral stand. So yeah, don't remember last episode we had a little truck that sells uh, hot dogs or puri rolls. Then we have a big old sign telling people what's wetland. Now over here we go a little bit backstage. Remember last episode, the water treatment plant I already started on, just incomplete, but now it's all done. So yeah, we've got little pools here where we treat the water, some big silos to do water treatment things. I should probably put a ladder back here so you can climb up top, I think, I don't know. And over here we've got a, a building, which is doing filter stuff, because there's a whole bunch of pipes and whatnot coming out of it. I, I, I don't know what the stuff does, I'm just... It, it looks right. Like I said, I copied the, the stuff I saw at Johannesburg Zoo, so I saw they had a building near the water treatment section, and it looked a little like this, so I, I kind of mimicked it. And this, of course, leads to the little backstage road we saw earlier as well as to this little backstage path heading to the reptile, the entrance of the reptile area as well as the entrance of this area that I teased in the past two episodes and still haven't completed I promise we'll, we'll get to the, the fairy tale forest soon enough next episode next episode for sure yeah this is also how the little hot dog man 
get in, we'll drive down through here and into past this door, and then we can park over here. So let's walk up here and then we reach our next enclosure, which is for hippos. There we go, I'm chilling in the water. There's, there's three in total, I wonder where the other two are. Yeah, we also got some signs. These are just teaching about the types of rivers, and this is all the river systems in South Africa, just with fancy colors, so it visualizes it better. This, is, this course isn't made by me, the. I'm trying to remember, someone, someone made it. There's, I believe that's a Twitter handle. Someone that studies water, they made this map and I thought it was cool, so I put it on here. You kind of see how most of the South Africa's catchment all is all this dark blue and it all flows into the Orange River, which is the largest river in South Africa, and it makes sense considering how much water it gets. And you can also see how some of the borders are formed along the river. See how all the borders of South Africa kind of falls along some form of river. It's interesting, it's like that with most places, most countries I find rivers define the borders. So anyway, back to the hippo enclosure, we've got these little life buoy things, life buoy things, life uh, floaty savey devices, I forget what they're called. In case someone's stupid enough to climb over the fence and fall in here, they can. And the hippo doesn't eat them, you can eat them. Hippo wouldn't eat you, but you know you know you know what hippos do. It's, it's it's not pleasant either way. You can throw this and try and save them. But yeah, oh it's a hippo in there. We've got a little water area over here. There's the other hippo. Over here we have a little grassy area so we can come and nibble on the grasses there. And okay. And I know this may may not be necessarily feasible, but uh, let, let's just pretend you know it is. I, I decided to build a zoo on a mountain. It's a little difficult to plan everything, and I know it might not, might not be realistic for a truck to come all the way up here and be able to deposit the hippos into the enclosure up here. We just pretend that we have really skilled drivers. Why are these staff members just standing? <laughs> Oh, I can't, I can't play, so there we go. Whoa. Yeah, just just ignore the fact that this might not be entirely feasible. That this hippo backstage might not be all that realistic. It is fine. It, it's all it's all on a hill. It's difficult to plan these things. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how the hippo enclosure turned out. It's not super fancy. It's like, you know, just simple pool, just a little grassy area, a little stable at the back. And as you might have noticed, it is divided into two enclosures, so... Walk up here, we have a nice little viewing plaza of the, uh, the pool. Ah. So if the water is clear, like maybe they do a little bit of... Swapping out the water, you might be able to see the hippos in here, otherwise you'll just see the heads pop out every now and again to breathe. Or they might be on the grass back there. And there's a... As I said, this is two enclosures, so... I suppose if any of the hippos are breeding, or... One of them gets sick, you can quarantine them. In the separate enclosure, we have a little... A smaller pool over here. And, uh... Yeah, and just... I believe this is Vihoha's elephant fence. His elephant fence head, so if you wanna close them off, you can do so. But we'll leave it open for now. And yeah, they come into this pool for some reason. They were already in one pool and they decided to come in this one. I don't know why, but I think they like the smaller pool more, which is very weird. Could have sworn there was a third hippo in here, let's try and find it. 
It might be in the stable. Let's go explore the stable. Yep, there it is. So yeah, in the stable we can also fence off the... their post. This gate also closes. So... Shoop. And then we can quarantine the hippos. Yeah. Yeah. Fairly simple stable, but I'm kind of happy with it. Like I said, I use Vihoha's elephant fences. They work really well for this. This heavy, like, kind of steel reinforced fence. That's suitable for these massive murder machines. Let's uh, hop back on. No, oh no, I've sunk it into the ground. Oh well. Let's fly over there. Explore mode. And now we just got a few more enclosures left to do. Anyway, oh, let's let's maybe see if we can get a good look from up here. Kind of see the hippo enclosure. We can see the penguins from up here. That's cool. The cool sight line. Yeah, but up here we have a viewing area for another animal. But I think we'll go investigate these little aviaries here on the side. Yeah, so as you'll notice the wild dog enclosure that was here is is removed. Don't worry, the wild dogs are still in the zoo, they are this enclosure where our wolves are. And our wolves will get be getting a new enclosure in that area, past those new conspicuous buildings. Yeah, we can come up here, we whittle branch here, whoops. Into some Avery, so two of these are empty, I still need to get the birds to put in there, but this one we've moved our spotted eagle owl into, so yeah. He's just sitting over there. Because even though this one's empty, we can investigate it, because rarely there's... Even if I had species to put in here, they would be implied anyway. Yeah, so big thanks to Jaguar X again for his Avery prop pack. So like these little bar things, these little stands at the back, as well as these little water dishes. Really, just like a whole bunch of props you can go and put into your Avery without like putting too much work yourself. Um, over here, a little owl we put made a little bit more secretive, so we put this uh, barrier, I guess. About these ramps, so it's wheelchair friendly. I, I don't know if a, I don't know if a wheelchair will actually be able to go up here. It is a little steep, but please, again, forgiveness. I, I decided to do a stupid thing and build my entire zoo on this steep hillside, so so it's hard to make everything wheelchair and pram friendly when yeah it's all on a mountainside. Over here for our final bird we have a Toko Toucan. This is a uh, Drac made some killable toucans and I just recolored it so boom Toko Toucan. Yeah I didn't explain this earlier but any of the workshop items I use I made a collection on Steam so you can go and check it out. Check any of the items out and uh, yeah, use them yourself. And over here, this is where the zoo becomes incomplete again. Still need to work on this area. But we've got the start of a retaining wall and the path going up there. But over here, we can come on to our final enclosure. Yeah, so this enclosure and the Avery's are the, the newer stuff. Everything else I did like months ago. So I could have, if I just Finished up these. This episode could have come out a while ago, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. But it's out now, so no problem. Anyway, final enclosure. We have a thing for otters, or just one otter. This is supposed to be a spotted neck otter, but of course they aren't in the game, so I'm just using a giant otter for that because the giant otters have spots on their necks. As you can see, it's just a 
We have a pool right up front here. And we have a land area all the way at the back here. And we've got a little uh, mesh here so the otter can't climb out if it decides to do so and then guests also can't fall in as well. And yeah, this used to be the old wild dog enclosure like I said earlier so you can see some aspects of that like like the fence over here is still the same and then the shelter exactly the same this is the old wild dog shelter decided just reincorporated for the otter exhibit it is coming up close Let's see if it's gonna go for a swim or just bounce around like that yeah, so got some faux rocks and some faux steps and can go all the way back there and can of course swim. I don't think you can deep dive. I think this is too shallow, but uh, oh well. I, should, I don't think I made this water dirty. I think this water is too clear. But we'll say that the zoo just pulled it in. This is a brand new exhibit. The zoo pulled it in. The algae hasn't has, had a chance to settle in yet. Yeah, we can also, I don't know, kind of see what it's like backstage. There's not a lot, I just put a dirt path. I still I still need to finish up this backdrop, because this is all bare. Yeah, uh, got the wild dog, or well, the shelter, a little window so you can peek in to see what they're doing. Uh, where's our auto friend? Yeah, there, there are spots on the neck. You can kind of see. It kind of works as a spot neck otter, even though it's like a lot bigger. Oh wow, that was a big jump. And over here from the side, you can also see the, the otter if it decides to walk past, which I like. I think that's cool. Uh, yeah, what else do I have to show? I think, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, we can see the what's behind the Avery's here. In the future, I do need to modify this wild dog enclosure, maybe make a a better path on this side so people can see it, and then also integrate this fence with the the wall of this Avery. Oh, this Avery block, I guess. Avery buildings. But, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty simple backstage. It's just a way for the staff to get in. And it plops some buckets down. And hop through the door. Very simple, but I like it. And yeah, that's the wetlands area. I guess this area is kind of aren't, aren't really part of the wetlands area. They're just kind of close proximity to it, but. Enjoy it. Have a hippo. Oh, taking a nap. Yeah, so let's get a wide overview shot. You can see the... The... Wetlands purification thing. The artificial wetland. So yeah, we'll make advantage of the natural slope. We'll pour them. Pour the water at the top here, it will filter through all these plants and reeds right at the bottom, then we'll go back into the, the water systems. You can also see our, our Avery up here. Yeah, so, like I said, the Avery is probably my favorite part of the wetlands, especially this view. Hopefully, in the future, we can get uh, more modded animals, so like white faced whistling ducks and maybe some. Red Bull teals or Cape teals, so I don't have to use the prop animals. I'm, I'm, I, I would hope I'm hoping Frontier eventually adds some uh, waterfowl for the game, so we have an actual base. Because currently the waterfowl either use the peafowl mod, so they're fully terrestrial, or they use the flamingo mod, so they're fully aquatic. But yeah, I want, I want some proper ducks, please, Frontier. Ducks or, or even even geese or swans, just. Or pelicans, just something. Yeah, 
that's the wetland area. Like I said, uh, the the new area is gonna. We saw over there. We get a little. You get a, You get an extra teaser this episode. I know I've been teasing it for the past two episodes, but it's still not completed. It's, it's gonna be a big area. It's gonna be a long episode, so don't worry. I'm getting close. I don't know when. I'm gonna try soon, but I'm not gonna give a date because I don't think I'll be able to keep to that. But yeah, European area will be coming soon. And uh. Yeah, hopefully I'll see you that. That'll definitely be the next episode. I promise you that much. I know last episode I said next episode. Episode before that I said it'll be coming next episode. But next episode, 100% sure because I don't have anything else going on in the zoo. Except that. But yeah, whenever that may be, hopefully I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, bye.